What's going on guys, no guys here, welcome back to another formation and tactics video. In today's video we're going to go over the 5-2-1-2, a formation that exploits any defense and breaks your opponent, especially down the wings. It's broken because your fullbacks, when they advance forward, they are basically unmarked. Your opponent can't do anything about it, it doesn't matter if they change their formation, if they increase their defensive width, when they are forward and when they are attacking, they are basically completely unmarked. You see, when you're defending, you're defending a 5-3-2 flat. But when you win the ball, that's when the flying fullbacks advance forward. You see, as soon as you win the ball, they fly forward. But they basically have their own lane. When they're running, they're basically running down the wings, almost hugging the sidelines. But your opponent can't do anything about it. You see, the only way he can actually physically stop this is if he manually controls the player and marks that zone. Apart from that, he can't stop it. Now you see why this formation is also good. Let's say, for example, especially if you're struggling in attack, it actually creates more space for your strikers in the middle of the pitch. Because what happens is when your fullbacks, when they are running forward, it spreads your opponent's fullbacks to mark your basically your fullbacks that have turned to wingers. And it basically allows them to separate from the center backs and creates more space in the middle. So it kind of creates a situation where the fullbacks are either completely unmarked or they are marked, but you're basically your central side of the pitch is empty in some respect. So it creates many different options and outlets for you to attack. The defending system is a 5-3-2, and against the narrow and 4-3-1 variation is really solid. And in terms of the attacking sense, you can play against any formation. It completely works, and it completely breaks the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. So let's go over the system. It's important you understand how it works. Now this is different from the 3-5-2 and I'll explain to you why. Now this is a re-modification of the 5-2-1-2. The reason why is the most recent patch, defensive stability is a big issue. If you want to know about the 5-2-1-2, I'll make a video on that in the future, but let's just focus on the 5-3-2 for now. So we kept the three center mids in the midfield for added stability. The back five, they remain. But the most important thing is when you're defending, you need to remember that these guys are going to advance forward, which I'll get onto in a second. So when you're defending and these guys are far forward, you have to basically understand it's basically three kind of midfielders and three defenders. That's the way it is when you're defending. Now, obviously, you do have two of your strikers. One of your strikers is on comeback on offense. That, is, that doesn't mean they're actually going to come back. It's just that means that they're going to be in a bit more reserved position. And one of your strikers are going to be a bit more forward. That's all it means. So when you transition to attack, both the left back and the right back, they completely fly forward. But you need to understand, they have their own lane. So you need to understand, they separate from the entirety of the formation. So the rest of the formation, they keep you basically keep the shape of the rest of the formation. But the left back and the right back, they are completely on their own. So they fly forward. And this is what creates the outlets for you. So when you have the ball, you can have options to pass through. And this is all from the fast build-up play, but we'll get on to that in a second. This is why fast build-up play is extremely important for this formation. Now, when you're attacking, it basically converts into basically a 3-2-3-2. Three, two, three, two. The reason why is the two, the two basically the four backs, they fly forward. So you've got your three. Then you have the two center mids. One of your center mids, in my case, the right center mid, which is your more attacking center mid, this person is then going to go forward. So it's going to kind of act as like a last minute cam runner. So this person's on balance. So this gonna, it's going to help you when you're attacking. So that's your three, two. Then your three kind of midfield comes from your the left back, your right back, and your center mid. And then you have your two strikers. So when you're attacking, you're basically in a 3-2-3-2 three, two, three, two system. Now fast build up is what allows them to run forward. Now the defense is starting to go with balance. What I would say is do not use drop back with this formation, although it, in theory it seems like, you know, if you have your full backs further back, that means when you're, you know, your, your three center backs, should I say, because your full backs are flying forward. Although in theory it seems to work, but it doesn't really work in, in practice because when your full backs eventually do come back to a defensive position, they won't press because of a new patch. And I think sometimes you're actually catching yourself in out of position by using drop back. And I find you just create more holes. So I'll say balance is the way to go. If you are good at defending, and this is important, if you're very good, I will say if you're like a gold one player and you know how to manually defend properly, then go pressure on heavy touch. Otherwise, keep it unbalanced. I personally use it unbalanced. And it's what I'd recommend. Now, width. Width, I've gone with four. The reason why I've gone with a defensive width of four is naturally the formation is quite narrow. Now, remember, as I said, you have to remember these fullbacks just kind of treat them like they're in their own lane. Just completely disregard them from the team. Now, I want the team to maintain their narrow position 
This formation is really effective against you know, the 4 2 3 1 and the 4 1 2 1 2 narrow formation. It does work against the 4 4 2, of course, but the left back and right backs are just there more as visual deterrents. You, the main the main stability of this formation is down the middle. So that's why I've gone with a, a basically a narrow width. If I do increase the width, it's not going to make that much of a difference because what, what's going to happen regardless is that my fullbacks are still going to be very wide. One thing you can do though is that if you find that it's not narrow enough, you can always use over the ball side with the deep pad tactics. Um, if you do want to you know, contract your team and make them a bit more narrow on the defensive side, but again, I really wouldn't recommend it. They're naturally spread out. The, the way the formation actually spread out as good as it is. Now with the depth, I've gone with five. It's a bit of an advanced depth, but the reason is, is to, is to do with fitness. Now these players are going to be running up and down the pitch. I got Jordi Alba as an example, so you can play a left back there. Another example I have on a right back is Bernard. This is Scream Bernard. He has 99 stamina. This is a key example of a play that's good to use. The problem is, because you're on fast build-up play, if, for example, you have a lot, a lot of players running back and forth, then you keep doing, you know, you're losing the ball, winning the ball, you're going to lose a bit more stamina, so I've increased the depth more. Plus, you kind of want your strikers higher up the pitch, thus I've gone with a higher depth, just a bit more easier to counter. Now going over to the defensive style, so the key, the whole way this formation works is fast build up play. That's the way the whole formation works because what happens is fast build up play allows your players to run forward, especially in the case of the left back and right back. So when you use fast build up play, the left back and right back, they basically fly forward on their own. And that's when the basic the right center mid basically comes forward as well. So the right center mid also is on get forward. So this player almost acts like a cam. So a playmaker here, someone like, you know, Neymar or even someone like De Bruyne will be very good in this type of role. It's kind of a playmaker-esque player that can also shoot the ball. So this is what makes the players run. Now, honestly, I will not delve into any other offensive styles. If you use any other offensive styles, the formation completely breaks. That's the important thing. If you don't use fast build-up play, the formation doesn't work how it's meant to work in principle. And that's the only way you'll break your opponent and exploit your opponent is by using fast build-up play and quickly, I suppose you can say eliminating your opponent by destroying them on the wings. And that's why fast build up play is the best option. Now with offensive width, we need a high width. And the whole idea is, is that when your fullbacks are attacking, you ideally want them to be highest possible. Now in, in, in some respect, the width doesn't really affect the fullbacks entirely, but you also want to create enough space between these players. You don't want your too much of your basically your middle players too congested in the middle. You want them to be a tiny bit spread out, but the key thing is you want these guys to be as wide as possible. You don't want it to be too wide, but I think seven is the correct balance. I would not touch the width. I would say leave the width exactly how it is. It's probably the best width to use. Now, in terms of players in the box, it's on three, but do not worry. Remember, as, as I always told you, instruction always override tactics. So I'll explain how the instructions are going to override that regardless. Corners and free kicks, it doesn't really matter. As usual, whatever you want. Obviously, the higher you put it, you know, the more susceptible you are to the counter attack. Now, going over to the instructions. So we're going to start from the top. Now, stay forward, get in behind. The player who's got the less stamina, put this person on, get it behind, stay forward. Now, the other striker, put them on come back in the fence. Now, this doesn't mean they're going to come back on the fence per se, but let's just say there's a gap in your defense. He might come back and might defend, or alternatively, he'll just be a bit more in a reserve position. So that way, your right striker is just behind your left striker, so it's easier for you to kind of pick up the ball when you pass the ball to your left striker. Now, this is what's important. Now, the two center mids that are defensive both of them on stay back while attacking, stay at the edge of the box. It's important you put them on stay on the edge of the box because you're going to have too many players far forward and you're going to get done on the counter attack. Especially if you just, especially when the fullbacks run forward and you distribute the ball to the wide areas. If you have too many players and get in the box, you're going to be susceptible to the counter attack. And especially if you're not good at defending, you're going to get killed. So stay on the edge of the box. Now, the other centre mid, the right centre mid, I have him on balanced. You can put him on get forward if you do find this is too defensive. I have him on balanced and get into the box. I also have him on cover centre. Now, the question you're going to ask is why are they all on cover centre? It's for the sole reason that it doesn't really matter about your wing areas because even if your opponent is going to attack you, even if you put them on cover wing, it's kind of pointless because it's going to leave you open in the middle. It's just best. This is like one of the few unique examples where in a narrow formation is worth using and having them on cover centre because the fullbacks will return back to their position. These are just more of just decoys to kind of stop your opponent going down the middle and breaking down your back three or exposing them. 
Now moving over to the centre back still on stay back while attacking, and say same as the goalkeeper is all unbalanced. Now this is what's in a very very important. Both the full backs are unbalanced. That's the first thing, right? You need to put them on balance because when you combine them with balanced and fast build up play, this is what sends them forward. You see, even if you put them on join the attack and use another formation, I mean another tactic, it doesn't work the same way. The key thing is they need to be on balance so that way when you win the ball, they will basically rush forward, they will surge forward. It's very important you leave it on balance. If you have it on join the attack, you lose the element of surprise. The key thing with this formation is you want them to run back when you win the ball. And you don't want them to run back sporadically. You want them to win back almost in a counter-attack type, ta type situation. Just trust me, leave it on balance. Do not put it on join the attack. Just trust me on that. The, the second most important thing is overlap. Now, if this is not on overlap, the entire formation fails. Because if this is on inverted, it breaks the formation. First of all, it doesn't. It just congests the middle. It doesn't create anything. If this is on balanced, it will just depend on the player and it won't work. You want them to always overlap. So this way, they'll basically almost hug the sidelines. You won't even need to use hug the sidelines. You just need to put them on overlap. So the most important thing is overlap and balance. Now, do not worry. You don't have to use any deep pad tactic. This is made very simply because I know most of you guys are watch this. Some of you guys only play season. Some of you guys don't even play ultimate team. So to keep things very simple, I've not had any deep pad tactics in at all. This is all you do is play the formation as it is. In the future, I'll update a more advanced video. And that's pretty much it. When you're attacking, the main thing is because these players are basically high up the pitch, basically if against your opponent, let's say your opponent has a back four, your opponent has to make a choice of what they do. Now they can either mark the four backs and thus creating more space in between for your players. Or the other option is, is they then mark the center backs and thus creating a bigger gap between their full backs and their center backs. That's why the formation is really good in the attack. Give it a try. I'm sure you'll like it. If you do struggle on the defensive side, and let's say you're still struggling, what you can do is you can put one of these other players, uh, other attacking player, on stay back while attacking. In case you're wondering, this is the way um, I set the formation up. In case you're wondering, um, I set up like this. I use full backs and center back, um, but you can still use center backs. The only thing is one of the midfielders, so for example, in my case, Bernard is going to play right back. So just do bear that in mind. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any other questions, please do let me know. Merry Christmas anyway, regardless, and a happy new year for those that are celebrating. And of course, my links to my Discord, my Patreon for FIFA School, and my Twitch for streaming is all linked down below. Thank you very much. Hope you had a good year for FIFA 19. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, boys.